Just close your eyes until you're 29. Everybody wants to come up with excuses. I'm this, I wasn't born that way. I'm stuck, I'm in a rut. I wasn't born here, this. You can't be lost in life when you're this young. I'm a, a female, I'm an immigrant, I'm a minority, I'm transgender. I, ex- excuses, reality. The problem is, nobody cares. Your lack of patience is killing you. It's slowing you down and everybody else. Your need of things is killing you. I need a fucking watch, I need a fucking whip. You need to be happy because happiness drives everything. You're not lost in life, you're just early in the process. Everybody's trying to prove something so early. You can wrap your head around not giving a fuck about any advancement to your 29. Please, whatever it takes, call your grandmother, go to your great grandfather's burial spot, go back to the old country, go to a shelter, do something. Do something that recalibrates your perspective on what is actually going on here. Every person in here fucking won the lotto. You won. Way too many people have made decisions without ever trying. Everybody's judging themselves way too early. You can literally do four different things over the next two years, six months at a time to figure out everything that you think you might like, you should try to do. Doing something around passion is, this, is very similar to love. You're blinded because you like it. It's not rushing. It's not rational. The number one reason I push patience. Patience, man, patience. Everybody's looking up to audit themselves where they are now. Is because patience will give you the air cover to take risks. Time is your asset. What I would do is gather as many experiences as possible. The one thing a 20 year old has over me is 20 years. (laughs) Get the fuck out of the machine for a second and think about what you're doing here. You get optimism and patience, you're fucking off to the fucking races. The 99% that achieve are willing to sacrifice, be persistent, put in disproportionate work, and think in 50 year terms, not 50 day terms. Just close your eyes until you're 29. Just close your eyes until you're 29. Because when you see regret in a man's eyes, it's fucking painful because you, have, you can't do shit about it. When you're 90 and you're not mobile and you're tired and it's over, you can't do it, you can't do it. You can't build that company you wanted. You can't spend that time with your kid. It's regret. And it fucking drives the shit out of me. Look, I think failure has to be quantified. If you fail that you never can get up from it again, you know, that's not a good failure. I think, I think failure and adversity are the two things I think about. For me, as an entrepreneur, and very entrepreneurial, and always in my own stuff, all the failures along the way, even going back to like the baseball card show when I was 13 that I paid $400 for a table and nobody showed up to that baseball card show, that was a learning lesson. Those micro failures were super, super important. I think, you know, it depends on your stomach, right? Like if you, if you really fail, like go out of business, I think people take one of two ways, right? They're like just finished and they're never able to get off the mat and they go in a different direction. So to me, I think quantifying the failure is important to me. They gotta change, you gotta evolve. Like Madonna did it right. She reinvented herself 14 times. That's why she had a long career. You know, like you've gotta reinvent yourself. You know, so I, let's talk about sports. When you're the best athlete and you're like the guy and you're like one of the top 15 players, Draymond Green, he's my buddy. Draymond really worked on his game yeah. every off season. You know, uh, Ricky Rubio, the flashy point guard from uh, Minnesota, if he developed his outside shot, he would have been a much bigger player. He had all the passing skills, the quickness, he's got everything. If, instead of going to Ibiza and the fucking chicks in the off season, he worked on his 18 foot jumper, he'd be in the game. If you have ambition, your actions have to match that. And too many people are just like, not putting in the work, their mouth is way ahead of their fucking re- you know, actions. Like, Really? You're gonna be the greatest NBA player of all time? Why, because you think you got a little handle on the weekends? You need to shoot 15,000 free throws before school every day. What did you do from Friday 5 p.m. until Monday 7 a.m.? I'm just curious, like, and I don't think you shouldn't have a weekend, but I think everybody's ambition actually is more predicated on their actions than their words. My friends tell me all the time they're so ambitious, and I'm like, if that's true, then you punt 
leisure and you punt concerts at Jones Beach and you work. I realize what's going on here, one life. I realize that I'm living like this is our only at bat and most of you aren't. People fucking walking around here like they're coming back. People fucking walking around here like they're coming back. You're not coming back. Well listen, I don't want to impose my beliefs on others. Maybe you believe you come back. I believe you come back, you come back as a tree or a flower pot or D-Rock sneakers and that blows compared to being a human. And so I'm acting that way. I'm acting that way. Your first video got how many views? 30, 75, I mean, it, like, you know, nobody watched. Right, so like when I get emails, which I get 50 of them a day for entrepreneurs, I'm like, hey, like I know you always talk about patience, like I've been doing this, it's not working, traction, should I give up and do something else? Inevitably I'll email back and be like, how long have you been doing it? Oh, four months, and I'm like, fuck you. You know, like, you want this to be your life and you're giving up after four months? Are you out of your mind? Patience is grossly underestimated. You know, I was very successful, my wine business is growing, now I start doing this show and spending all my time trying to promote this show, and the sales of Wine Library start flattening out because I was the engine. The show wasn't getting watched, but I knew this was right, and the show really didn't take off until mid-2007, a year and a half in, of five days a week of doing a show, getting only hundreds, then a couple thousand views. Gotta keep putting in the work, every day. One is better than zero. Gotta keep putting in the work, putting in the work, putting in the work. There is no quick cure. The hard work matters, and the patience is what overrides it, right? I don't need to get mines at 25. Heck, I don't need to get mines at 45. This is a long, long game. I'm very driven by the climb, right? I think being an immigrant, I guess, or just having this DNA, I don't like winning. I like losing. I like the struggle. I don't give a shit about the, the stuff that comes along, but the game, the game is my drug. Like, there will never be a game over for me. There's no dollar amount. The, the game, the process, the climb, that is the drug that drives me. That is my oxygen. That's what I love. And so every day is gonna go by. 2016, 2017, 2018, 2019, 2020, 2021. And you're gonna look for the short game. You're gonna look for that miracle algorithm. You're gonna look for that one move that's gonna change your outcome. And you're gonna continue to search and play the short game while I keep putting in the work, the hours, the long-term value, and putting in the work while everybody else is hoping and dreaming I'm gonna be executing. You play this short game. I'll keep playing the long game. And it's time to put on a helmet and get to work. I'm scared. I'm super scared. I'm scared because I know exactly what happens this month every year, every year. I'm scared. I'm scared because I know that there are so many of you that graduate this month and have no fucking idea what you want to do. And that's okay. Most people don't. You should not be stressed about that. I'm actually not scared about that. I'm scared that you don't realize that you're entering the greatest five year window of your life. If you are 22 years old, you are entering, first of all, some of the greatest years of your life, A, but B, this. This is the moment, because you have to understand, this next five year window is when you don't go practical and safe. This is not the time to get the job mom wanted you to. This is not the time to try to maximize as much money so you can buy a a fat whip. This is the time to realize that you have a five year window, and it's three for some, it's eight for others, but this is a five year window for you to attack the life that you want to win, not because it's the secret or because the world's so zen, because it's fucking hard as shit out there. Class is easy, right? What you've been doing for the last 16 years is it's structured, it's easy. The world, this thing, this thing is hard. However, that contradicts what I'm gonna tell you right now, which is this is the best and easiest five years of your life because this is when you need to attack what you love and what you want to do. Here's why. You don't have all the baggage. You may have college loans. Respect, it's hard as shit. You may have the expectations of your parents, mentally hard, fake hard. You may have a lot of other things, but this is exactly when you can live with four roommates in a basement and eat fast food. Do you understand? This is not when the baby's there. 
This is not when you've been married and you promised. This is not when the world has sucked out all your dreams and hopes yet. You still got this window. And yet, so many of you are so hungry for short term, short term gains. Like maximizing the job that paid you $3,000 more but it's not as fun but you want that $3,000. For what? For what? For a new iPhone? For what? You get to live life one time. And this is the time right now to understand what's actually happening and actually map your behavior to something that will impact you for the next 80 years. So promise me, promise me that you understand that the land grab of happiness starts right now. That you don't have to worry about getting that job. What you should do is go and travel and learn. Go and start that business that you've always wanted. Hook up with those three teammates and start that band you've always wanted. This is the time to be massively risk. Massively risk oriented. I know that this is when you're supposed to grow up and go see the world. But guess what? The world isn't what mommy and daddy told you. The world is exactly going to be what it's going to be with or without the way you thought it was gonna be. A ton of shit is gonna change. The world changes every goddamn day. Right now what you need to recognize is you can afford to. And again, because I'm scared, I can hear myself can talking. I'm not saying it's the secret, it's practicality. When you are in your early 20s, this is when you can grind at your highest levels because there isn't all the baggage that comes across from life. It's harder for the 42 year olds that are watching right now to listen to this advice. You can't just wake up tomorrow and be like, let's go. Because little Sally has soccer fucking practice. And because you've got a million other things that are holding you down. But boy, if you're lucky enough to be graduating today with not an idea of what you're gonna do with your future, nobody's ever been luckier than you. Please recognize it.